He's coming home. Corbin's coming home. At least it looks that way. Maybe if there's an election that's held today, Jeremy Corbyn would probably win. But right now we have Theresa May who is failing publicly and open. This is utter humiliation. However bad you think your day is, whatever pressures you think you take on as you go through your particular day, be it at work, be it in family, whatever, it is nothing like utter humiliation on an international scale. To be a national embarrassment in the case of Brexit and Theresa May's Brexit deal. That Brexit deal is dead on arrival. She couldn't get that Brexit deal through, um, in which case she pulled her vote. And she pulled that vote because if they would have had that vote, that would have been one of the most humiliating losses for government of the UK in the history of the UK. And in order to prevent that humiliation, she had to go through another humiliation of just not having the vote itself. She survived a, a contest to her leadership but what it boiled down to is Theresa May needed to secure additional concessions on her Brexit deal. The European Union told her in advance that there would be no concessions, but she didn't listen and she went to talk to them directly. Net. No. She tried to put a good spin on it when she left, saying that she was on pace. No. Nonsense. They told her no. They said we will give you clarification but we are not making changes to this deal. That backstop isn't going anywhere, which means that that deal is dead on arrival. Now, Theresa May, in order to save her head, made a concession herself saying that, look, I'm not gonna run in 2022. And even then, you had 117 people voted against her. I think it was 117. Um, and the people who voted for her, many of those people were on her payroll. They were backbenchers who were on her payroll. So essentially, the people who voted for her were paid to pay, vote for her. But in this case, this was an embarrassing thing. Take a look at this. This was a scene between her and Juncker, um, Jod Claude Juncker. I remember Juncker when he was head of the um, when he was president of the European Union, so he's familiar to me. Um, this is first one thing, two things. They're fist bumping. This is Angela Merkel. She's on her way out. I don't know who this guy is. I can't see his face, but these guys are fist bumping. Theresa May is there to secure a deal because her political life is on the line. Literally, her political life is on the line. If she can't secure this deal, she will be voted down. They would take her out, meaning she's going to lose that prime ministership, especially with the DUP, because her prime ministership purely depends on a small group from Northern Ireland called the DUP. She needs to secure a deal to keep her political life intact. Pressure busts pipes. That's what we used to always say at the chess thing. Pressure bust pipes. We say that because when you're playing a game and it gets to these really tense positions, sometimes the nerve of a man fails, in which case he blunders and loses. In which case you would always hear Butch, the, my barber, if he's not playing, he's sitting somewhere and he's looking over at the game while he's cutting somebody's hair. Pressure bust pipes. Take a look at this. This is a scene that played out between to re to between May and Juncker. And came what could go down as one of the great symbolic moments of Britain's 45 years. Is on camera, the Prime Minister plainly lost her temper today with the European Commission President, Jean-Claude Juncker. At his press conference last night, Juncker had said Britain needs to tell Brussels what they want and stop being nebulous, he said, and imprecise. So today's subsequent row went like this, two lip readers have told us. What did you call me, May began? You called me nebulous. Yes, you did. Nebulous. Nebulous. Yes, you did. I didn't, said Juncker. I didn't. And the arguments clip. Here's the thing. People have called Theresa May worse things, even in Parliament. I think Jeremy Corbyn has probably called her worse things. And the Scottish prime, uh, the, 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 the representative from Scotland, um, from the SNP party, has 
he has called her horrific things. I can't remember the, the conversations, but in the back and forth that they were having and everything. But some of the things, I was like, oh my God, how, how the hell does he get away with that? You wouldn't be, be able to get away with that in American politics. Um, nebulous, of all the things to call somebody, is not that much of a, a horrible thing, um, especially in the political space. But I suspect this is more to do with mm, pressure, the pressure, the pressure. I'm trying to retain my political life. And I need a deal. God, I need a deal. Please give me a deal. Just give me a deal. I need to. I can't go back here. They're going to take my head. They're going to take my head. Yet. No. Nay. Kick rocks. <laughs> they sent her on her way. Um, This is not good, folks. At least not for Theresa May. So let's. Start here. I, I always like to give my summary and then go to the story itself because people may stay for the summary and just leave. Um, the articles at the bottom, if you want to go through all of them, but all of them say fundamentally the same thing. Theresa May humiliated. Look at CNN. CNN didn't hide it at all. They put in a title. No deal Brexit looked likelier ever after May's summit humiliation. Summit humiliation. Even CNN gets in on it. After being forced to pull a vote on her no deal Commons may plead it with European Union leaders. God, I love the way they are going in. May plead it. Please, 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 please. I just need a deal. Just give me a deal, dog. Just give me a deal. Plead it with leaders to add legal assurances um, that would assuage lawmakers furious over the crucial element of the so-called Irish backstop. But after an apparent lackluster presentation by May, European leaders rejected the demands, all but killing any hope of a parliamentary breakthrough in London and instead stepped up plans for no deal Brexit. Now, this is fascinating because of, of what's next. Now, this is getting into the area of a betrayal. And I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Uh, let's right here. A number of ministers are even reluctant, are thought to be reluctantly considering the prospect of a new referendum to settle the Brexit deadlock. A new one? You've already had one. You've never implemented the one that you had. I mean, come on. The people say they wanted to leave. And instead, you had a Remainer who's running the campaign to leave. What she's putting forth is not Brexit. You've never... Let me be very clear on this. I am agnostic towards Brexit. I've always been. Whether you want to leave or stay, I don't care one iota, one way or the other. I want Jeremy Corbyn elected prime minister, and I want Jeremy Corbyn to be able to implement the plans that he wants to implement. That's where I am. That's my political bias in this case was clear. I've always said that Brexit will have consequences. So I, I was never unclear on that. I've always been honest about that. If you're ripping yourself from the European Union, I expect that there will be some kind of consequences during the phase of readjustment. You know, Brexiteers sometimes are somewhat dishonest on this. Um, I've always been open on this. But the problem here is you've had a referendum. You've had a large outswell of support of people who said, we want to leave. Now you had a small smidgen of difference between those two things, but this was one of the largest elections ever in Britain. And this large share of people said, we want to go. We want to retain and take back our sovereignty. Now, however they ran that campaign, whether it was racist, whether it was the song, whatever, it's a campaign and they decided to leave. The person who was in office was a remainer and didn't necessarily have this sort of leaving. You can't honestly tell me that that Brexit deal is what people signed up for. And yes, I can understand that the Brexiteers in this case, who I disagree with politically, at the very least I look at it as somewhat of a betrayal. I don't think those people are crazy for looking at this and calling it somewhat of a betrayal. And if you're gonna have another referendum, you've already had a referendum and you haven't implemented what the first referendum says. I mean, come on, let's be honest. At the very least own up to that. This quasi leave stay stuff that Theresa May is doing where it's like the worst of both worlds. I gotta be honest, between her Brexit deal and staying in the European Union, you might as well have just stayed in the European Union. This is not Brexit. It's not Brexit. Um, 
I can understand why Brexiteers feel betrayed by this. And like I said, I am agnostic on Brexit, so I don't have any hard ideological leanings one way or the other. I'm just saying how to look at it. What she's putting forth is a worst case scenario um, from leaving and from staying. Um, yeah, it's like, like, you know, the Brexiteers have even said there's some stuff in the bill that they're okay with. Um, the DUP has made the point that that backstop is a fail and they are no way are going to support it. Apparently, Labour and Jeremy Corbyn's government has been working on trying to, um, let's say, work with the DUP and try to find areas where they can join hands and gain interest. Apparently, some of the Tory, Tories have been reaching out to elements of Labour turncoats that were in the Labour government in order to try to prop up this deal. And Theresa May is not taking no for an answer with this deal. And this idea of a referendum, the question is, what's going to be on the referendum? If the referendum is... Do you want a no-deal Brexit or my deal? And taking that to the public. Is that right? No deal or my deal? Not no deal or my deal. Do you want my deal as a Brexit or do you... Well, let's read the article. Let, let me make sure. I, I heard that from um, Galloway. And I haven't seen that in the reporting, so I'm not going to count that. So ignore that part. I don't know what's going to be on the referendum. A number of ministers are even thought to be reluctantly considering the prospect of a new referendum to settle the Brexit deadlock. The Times, which reported the claim, said now, many now consider the Prime Minister's deal to be effectively dead in the water after the tense Brussels trip. That's amazing. Paul, Bert, Paul Brand understands Amber Rudd is seeking to unify with Labour backbenchers to avoid a no-deal exit but face opposition from the likes of Andrea Lidsom and Penny Mordren. Um, let's see. They're talking about bringing this up for some kind of debate or putting it on the table in January. Um, let's see. The Prime Minister's assessment of the European Union withdrawal agenda in light of the tense showdown with the European leaders comes with her expected to make a statement on Monday. It was also reported that Mrs. May told the European senior figure she might as well put the Brexit deal before MPs next week if no further reassurances on the controversial Irish border backstop measures would be coming from Brussels. The Financial Times quoted a source close to the Prime Minister saying, at the point where there is no prospect of getting anything more from the European Union, that's when you would have to put it to the vote. However, the government source made it clear that the press association that a vote was unlikely to be a commons vote on the withdrawal agreement next week. Let's see. A combative EU summit left Mrs. May insisting in some weird quasi alternate universe that she was still on track to win assurances from the controversial Irish backstop as if Human beings don't have eyes, and they weren't necessarily seeing the utter, complete, profound, breathtaking humiliation that was the, the EU uh, whirlwind tour. Putting a positive gloss on the EU summit, the Prime Minister said that further talks would take place in the coming days on measures she hopes will persuade MPs to back the Brexit agreement in Parliament. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Bad day for Theresa May. That rhymes. Lame duck, Theresa May. Her goose is cooked. Um, zombie Prime Minister walking. Zombie Prime Minister walking. I'll leave this here. Um, if you enjoy the content, please feel free to share like, subscribe. You can always support through PayPal or Patreon. Thanks all.